I choose to speak a little on the topic, sort of change it around. On the screen you see, let's get the right formula, but I sort of change it around and say, let's get the formula right. Let's get the what? Formula right. This indicates that there is a formula. There is a what? That we must get right. The chemist, the pharmacist, when they are mixing up their portion their drugs in order to get that formula right, they will concentrate on order. I remember when I was in high school in 10th grade doing chemistry for the first time. And, the, and, the, and I am, we are instructed to Mix this potion to bring a certain result. We are to put in different chemicals in the mixture. But then I said, all of them are going in the mixture, so let's just dump them in there. It will work. To my surprise, it did not work. And the teacher and others pointed out to me that there must be order in how you place that. Uh, the chemicals in order to get that result. And so there is a formula and we must get it right. What do you say? My brothers and my sisters, teachers, lecturers, caregivers, though educators in general, follow a formula. And the common underlying formula that is followed is you have got to do it over and over until you get it right. When a lecturer is preparing for a, his class for an exam, he ensures that he gives them lots of practice. What do you say? When you enroll to to, uh, in any form of study, you will not escape the assignments. You will not escape the researches because the formula is as long as you do it over and over and over, you will get it right. Without practice, you have a slim chance of passing that exam, what do you say? So let's get the formula right. The mission critical um, operations, like the airplane who, who sometimes, who oftentimes operate on autopilot. The mathematicians, when they are creating the formula for the plane to land, they have to get it right because they don't want uh, when the plane is landing, the plane will calculate the ground further than where it is. Can you imagine what that would be? So there is a formula and we must get it right. Life itself has a formula. That formula, we as Sunday Adventists offer 
um, repeat that formula. We know so well what is life, what is the soul. We know that um, that body plus what? The breath of what? The breath of God. When you combine those two, you get a what? A living soul. What do you say? Body plus the breath of God gives a living soul. That's the formula. And in that formula, we know, we can conclude that nothing, even the very breath we are breathing, belongs to who? It belongs to God. We can conclude also that man, we come from the dust of the earth. And not and because we come from the dust of the earth, we own nothing. We own what? Nothing. And when we take that breath of life, that God gives us, we will have what? We won't have a soul again. We just have a body. Because body plus breath give what? Soul. And so my brothers and my sisters, there is a formula. What is that formula, my, my, um, you may be asking? There is a formula that we that will keep us alive there is a formula that will bring glory to our soul there is a formula that will take us to eternity so that my brothers and my sisters we can sing endless praise in the earth may do what do you say and so um what is that formula I can tell you that this formula brings life. It brings life to dead bones. It brings life to dry bones. When that formula is applied, applied to your life, the dry bones that, are, that existed in your life will come alive, what do you say? Will flesh will take them. Life will take it. And suddenly your head start to move. Suddenly the, um, your, your feet start dancing. Your, 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 your ways start gyrating. Your hands start raising. Your voice start shouting praises to God. What is that formula? When that formula is applied to your life, doors that, were, that seemed impossible to open start open. Start swinging wide open. Only when that formula is applied, and I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, um, when that formula is applied um, to your life, demons who will always trap you. When demons trap you, you don't know what to do. And that formula is applied to your life. God says a thousand in Psalm 91. Psalm 91 a thousand shall fall on your what? Right side and 10,000 on your left side. And it shall not come what? Near you. When that formula is applied, my brothers and my sisters, demons will tremble. The trap that they set for you will turn against them. My brothers and my sisters, what is that formula? That formula is so important. We cannot live without it. And here, God, if you notice here in the scripture, that Jesus is saying, the field is ready. The field is prepared. And I believe that in America here, if the field if the field wasn't prepared right now, I am telling you that the field is more than right. Waiting for us to reap them, what do you say? What is that formula, preacher? I can say to you, 
that formula begins in John 3, 16. What did it say? For God, so what? Loved the world, that what? He gave his only begotten son, that what? Whosoever what? Believes. What is the key word? Believe. And Sister Akila, Sister Akila is going to read to us another formula, another part of this formula. Go ahead. Um, John 5, verse 40. Amen. So as, as Jesus says, you refuse to come to me that you may have what? Life. What is that formula? We cannot go to Jesus unless we trust him. We cannot serve Jesus unless we believe in him. And if we believe in him, we will do what? Trust him. When you look back on verse 46, it says, for, you, for if you believed Moses, what is the key word here? Believe. If you believe who? Moses, you would what? Believe me. For he wrote about who? About me. But if you do not what? Believe his writing, then what happened? How will you believe my word? What is this formula? This formula is your complete belief and trust. In your maker, what do you say? Amen. We look at, I want to, um, I want you to examine, examine uh, John chapter 8, verse 24. What did I say? John chapter 8, verse 24. And that scripture is a critical scripture. That scripture is a serious scripture. That scripture is so important. Are you there? Amen. Let us read it together. Therefore, Therefore I said to you, you will what? Die in, die in your what? Sense. Why? For if you do not what? If you do not what? Believe that I am what? I am he. You will what? You will die in your sins. Oh, my brothers and sisters, God wants us to believe that he that um he is the high ham, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. But what do we really? What should we really believe? That is so important. Let's continue. Um, looking at the scripture, we look at uh, John 6, verse 29. John 6, verse 29. And it says, Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God. That what? That you believe in him. That you want? That you believe in him. Believe in him whom he will set. We cannot serve God unless we put our complete trust in him. We cannot serve God unless God is our priority in our life. That's right. How do you know that God is your priority? An easy way to check that is look at your finances. <laughs> what do you spend most of your money on? Is it personal interest? Is it anything else other than God that tells you if you believe and trust in your maker? Hmm. Let's look at um, verse let's look at verse 47 of chapter 6. It says it says, are you there? Mm -hmm. It says, most assuredly, I say to you, he who what? Believes. He who what? Believes. Believes in me. Hmm. Has, Has what? Everlasting life. Why should he believe in him? Verse 48. 
I am the bread of life. Sometimes we, oftentimes, um, we get this formula wrong. We, we try to seek our bread. We try to seek our comfort. We try to seek everything else. And when we examine ourselves, we realize that we are putting God's word on the back burner. We are putting God's work on the back burner because I have to pay this bill. Because I have to get this home. I have to sleep comfortable. I have to take care of my family. But God is saying here, get this formula right. Serve me first. Trust me completely. Trust me eternally. Trust me with everything because I am your bread. What do you say? Amen. I am your provider. I am the one who gives you strength yes. to work. I open doors and I close doors. Hmm. When I close doors, no man can open it. Hmm. That's right. What they say. Amen. Yeah. I want us to look at verse, verse 63 of chapter 6. It says, it is a spirit who gives what? Life. The flesh, the flesh profits nothing. nothing. The words that I speak to you are what? Spirit. Spirit, spirit and life. And they are life. But there are some of you who do not want. Believe. There are some of you who do not want. Believe. Who is that person? We have to examine ourselves. Do we really believe that when I put God first, when He is forefront on my mind, when He is above my work, when God is above my family, when God is all on my mind, will I be comfortable? Will I be provided for? Will I make it? Will I be successful? We need to examine ourselves because this belief is trusting in God. What do you say? Amen. This belief is trusting in God. And I want us to look at um, another text here in in um, John 12, verse 46. What did I say? John 12, 46. John 12, 46. It says, it says, let us read it together. One, two. I have come as a light into the world. That whoever what? Whoever what? Believes on me. Should not what? Abide, Abide in darkness. Hmm. What are the darknesses that are in our lives? Are there any darkness in our lives? Let us examine us. If there are darkness it is in our lives, it's a sign we don't believe. In God. What do you say? Mm. If they are darkness, because God says, once you trust me with your whole life, then there will be no darknesses in your life. What do you say? Hallelujah. You may experience difficulties, you may experience trials. But once you trust me and lean on my what? Strength. My strength and my grace is sufficient to take you through what do you say? Because in Psalm 91, he promised. Is it in Psalm 91 or Psalm 19? He promised to preserve our going in and our coming out. What do you say? Amen. He promised to be our shield and our buckler. He promised to be our strength and our power. 
So let's get this formula right. Now, my brothers and my sisters, when this formula is right, then we can truly say, as what we did in our opening song, there is sunshine in my soul today. More what? Glorious and bright. Mm -hmm. And it continues to say, than glows in any what? Earthly skies, for Jesus is my light. And then it continues to say, there's music in my soul today, a call to my king. And Jesus, listening, can hear the songs I cannot sing, my brothers, when we sing. Sing is a form of joy. What do you say? When we lift songs to God, it shows that heaven is reigning in our heart. And when heaven come down and glory fill your soul, my brothers, what a glory it is to walk with God. What do you say? Hallelujah. But yes, Mr. Preacher, I get the idea that we should believe in our maker. But what is this belief? What should I believe? What should I believe? Before Jesus started his ministry, we know that he was forerun by who? John the Baptist. And John did not know Jesus. But when God showed John who Jesus is, what did John say in, in John 1 verse 29? What did he say? Behold, the Lamb of what? Who takes a what? The sins of the world. Hallelujah. My brothers and my sisters, your belief, our belief, must be centered on that. Because this is saying that God has taken away any sin you can ever commit. No. Or in your future, God has already forgiven you. God has already pardoned you. Hallelujah. The Pope, as we may judge him, God has pardoned him. What do you say? God has pardoned him for the sins he has committed in the past. God has pardoned him for the sins he will commit, he may commit in the future. The hardened criminal. The hardened criminal. God has already pardoned him. God, and it is good to know that whatever sin you can commit, whatever sin I have committed in the past, God has already forgiven me. Because it says, Behold, the Lamb of God, he takes away my sin. Every sin in this world Jesus has taken them away. I only need to accept this pardon. Amen? Hallelujah. Even though Jesus has taken away my sin, if I don't accept this pardon, then I will not enter into his words. What do you say? Amen. Amen. And if God has taken as has pardoned me, if God has forgiven me and set me free, then why remain in sin? Shouldn't I rejoice and shout because Jesus is my light? Amen. What do you say? Amen. 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 As the song says, as the song says, um, it slipped me a song that says, um, I'm just trying to remember. Uh, I will come back to it. I will come back to it. <laughs> a song that we often sing from Mrs. Tamika can, can help me. It talks about um, heaven come down. No, not that one. I will come back to it. <laughs> I will come back to it. You know? But this song talk about Jesus who fills us with his power, who fills us with his spirit, just because we go before him in praises.
Praise him because he pardoned us. Praise him because we are set free. Praise him because the devil, though he may sting me, though he may bring his host of army against me, I am victorious. We praise God uh, as a matter of fact. When we look at John, when we look at John chapter 14, John chapter 15, let's turn to it. John chapter 15, verse 16. What did I say? John chapter 15. John 15, verse what? 16. Let's, it says, let's read it together. You did not what? You did not choose me. Choose me, but I want choose, choose you, you and, and appoint you, you, that, you should that you should what? Go and bear, go and bear what? Fruit. Fruit. Let's continue reading. And, and that are, your fruit should what? That whatever. And here is the nice part. Mm -hmm. Here is the nice part. Let's read it together. Whatever what? Whatever you ask the Father in my name. That will what? He may give you. What a wonderful word God we serve. What do you say? Amen. All we need to do is go to God and thank him. For giving us a testimony. What is a testimony? God has forgiven me of my sins. God has pardoned me of my sins. God has cleansed me. I am free from the guilt of my past. I am free if I stumble now, if I stumble tomorrow. God has made us free. Amen. And that's why we go to him and say, God. give myself to you. Yes. I thank you. Take full control. I thank you. Order my life. Come through my life and, and have full control. Move up and down in my life yes. because I praise you. Hallelujah. I was feeling down and I would, because I am guilt, I was bearing the guilt of my sins. The thing that I've done wrong but you remind me that you pardon my guilt. All I need to do is just trust you and walk with you. It doesn't matter how difficult my present life may be. As long as Jesus is with me, then all is well with me. What do you say? Amen. 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 That's why we give God praise. Amen. But what has that to do with our scripture reading? Jesus says, the field is white, the harvest is waiting. Jesus says that I call you to labor, to reap where others have what? God calls us to do what? Reap. God calls us to do what, Sister Tamika? Reap. It means that in the world there the, the, the fruit is prepared. Yes. That's why when I go out and I give those um tracks, and I encourage you to that whenever you are going out, don't leave your house without tracks in literature, um literature um, Christian literature to save somebody because. God has prepared for you to do what? To reap. God is saying the work is already what? Done. Just trust me and go and reap. But what is believing has to do with our scripture? I just want to point out to you that when, if you look back on our scripture here in John 4, um, 35 to 38, Jesus is exclaiming that the harvest is ready. The harvest is ready. But you will notice here that Jesus did not say, Go ye therefore and preach my what? Gospel, baptizing them in the name of the what? 
Father, Jesus did not give them the commission to do what? To go home. It was after Jesus finished his work and ascended to heaven. His work is done. Then Jesus said what? Go. You know why? God wants us to have a testimony first before we can what? Share. We cannot share God's message unless we believe. What do you say? Amen. We cannot share God's message unless we have a testimony. What do you say? Amen. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, the woman at the well, yes. she had a testimony. What was the testimony? Oh, you'll find it in the um, same chapter 4. In the same chapter 4, uh -huh. where she says, Come what? Come what? See a man. See a man that does what? Tell me all, Tell me all that I've done. I've done. That's her testimony. Amen. That's her what? Testimony. And not until you experience God. Not until we have that testimony. Then we can share what you say. Amen. And so when she called. The men and the village. But as a matter of fact, when we examine the story, Jesus went up to her and said, I'm thirsty, I need water to drink. And so the conversation started. And when she meets who Jesus really is and get convicted, she didn't remember that Jesus wanted water. She left the pot and went and said, What? Well, Come see a man. When you read further down, um, in when you read further down, down, I, I do. Um, when you read further down, oh, it's verse forty-two of the same chapter. He said, "Then they said to the woman, after they come and experience Jesus for themselves, no, what did they say? Read it." Now we what? Believe. Not because of what you what? Not because of what you said. For we ourselves have heard him. And what? We know that this is indeed the who? The Christ, the Savior of the world. Amen. Let me say amen. Amen. All because she had a what? Testimony. Oh, did she believe? Did she believe? Yes, she believed. If you look at verse 19, she said, um, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a what? Prophet. So she believed, she was convicted that Jesus is God. Jesus is the Christ to come. And so my brothers and my sisters, getting the formula right, getting the formula right in our lives, we need to place our trust in God. We need to believe. We need to what? Believe. Believe, believe what? That he has taken away our sins. He's our shield. He's our buckler. He's our provider. He's our Jehovah Jireh. He's our promise keeper. He's our what? Everything that is right, everything that is nice, and when nice is at its best and cannot do any better, Jesus is better than best. Yeah. What do you say? Amen. 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 Now somebody said, Jesus Amen. is so good, is and so good and wonderful, and he is better than good when good is at its best. Yeah. Wow. And we say, Amen. Amen. If we don't believe that, my brothers and my sisters. We are going to walk in darkness. What is the darkness? We are going to run down paying our bills. We are going to run down working this nine to five and um, running out of the house early in the morning without spending time with our maker. If we don't believe that, my brothers and my sisters, then we will remain on ground zero. What is ground zero? 
Ground zero is when we remain not reaching out to others, not witnessing, not inviting someone to come see a man. Right. So we don't grow. How do you know if you believe? How do you know if you believe? The, the, the they must test to know if you believe and trust in God. Just examine how are you doing personal ministry? Are you witnessing? Are you telling somebody to come see a man? Notice mm. that personal ministry witnessing is automatic. Did Jesus say go and call the others? When he spoke with um with, with, with the woman at the well, yeah. she just dropped the pot and dash and do what? Yeah. Come see a man. Yeah. If that is not in our lives, then we it means we are in trouble. Yeah. Right. Right. We are in trouble. We don't trust that God is our provider. Mm. We we stressed how am I going to find the next food? How is this bill is going to be paid? And Satan laughed because he knew we are in his trap. Mm. But when we trust God, we know that a thousand shall fall on my right side and ten thousand on my right. left, but they shall not come near me. It doesn't matter what trap Satan set for me, God, the victorious God, will carry me through successfully. What do you say? Amen. And my brothers and my sisters, how important is it for us to believe? Did you know that science, scientists have answered that question? Scientists have answered that question, Brother Congress. And they put together a theory, and I'm sure we all heard about it. It's called the locus of what? Anybody know it? The your, they say everyone has something called your locus of control. Your what? Locus of control. And if my long term memory serve me well, locus means center. Your center of control. Last week, we, um, Dr. Man, the preacher, Touch a little bit on it. He pointed out that we, as human beings, and the animals, we have the same what? Passion. We have the same instincts. We have the same needs. We are like, we are like in that way. But God has placed a locus of control in our body in the, in, by the name of, uh, at the front of our brain, call it what? The frontal lobe. Call it what? And in that frontal lobe is what is um, known for what? Reason. Reason. That is not in animals. But we live by reason. Oh, what is this reason? Yeah. What is this reason? It's belief. We live by what? Belief. If you believe that if you are going, if you walk outside here in the sun, you are going to drop dead. Will you go? No. no. <laughs> That's our locus of control. If you believe that if you do certain things, um, negative happen, negative things will happen to you, will you move? No. Because that, your belief controls you. And so my brothers and my sisters, that's why um, so many texts in God's word emphasize that we should what? Believe. believe. Because when we believe in God, when we trust him, then we will move. Then things will change in our lives. What do you say? Amen. That is called the locus of control. And as seven events, as present truth members, there are some critical things that we must believe. Because as 
was discussed in the lesson this morning. There is what is called biblical truth, basic biblical truth, and there is present truth. Present truth is what is needed now to save this nation, what they say. Mm -hmm. To save this nation from snare. And I, as I was pointing out to, to, um, to somebody, a, a rider in my car, we're talking about the Sabbath. He says, and I pointed him to the command, Ten Commandments. You remember that command? Remember, can I repeat it? Remember the what? Remember the what? Sabbath, Sabbath day to do what? To keep it holy. Keep it holy. Six days shall you what? Do all thy work. Labor, not just work. Six days you shall what? Labor. Labor. And do all thy work. And do your work, but the what? The seventh, seventh day is the what? The Sabbath day. of the Lord thy God. Yes. yes, and it continues. That Sabbath commandment has got seen. That Sabbath commandment has what? God's seal. Mm -hmm. I was pointing out to the gentleman and he said, I said to him, there is a reason God used the word remember. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is the only commandment that, that begins with the word what? Mm -hmm. Remember. All the others said, thou shalt what? Not. And one says, honor thy mm -hmm. mother and thy father that your days may be what? Zachary, that your days may be what? Long. Long. And I pointed out to him that probably, Sister Tamika, one reason God said, remember, he looked down in the stream of time and realized that now there's going to be a conflict on which day is God's only day. Mm -hmm. And so God says, what? Remember, I was surprised when I was talking to some person about the seven days and the gentleman man said to me, but is it the seven days Sunday? <laughs> and I have to go back in history. Point to him, point to him, no, so no, the seven days not Sunday. It is Sabbath, Saturday. And so he said, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> During the conversation, and I should give you a testimony. One of the gentlemen that I was speaking to, after I explained all, you know, this thing about the Sabbath and so forth, that God's commandment, the importance of keeping it. And he came out of the car. I hear like a voice said to me, thank you. I hear like a voice said to me, I hear like the Lord said to me, thank you. God wants us to work for him, what they say. God wants us not just to work for him, but to what? Live for him! Yes. Now, there's one important thing about the Sabbath, which is present truth. The Sabbath is what? One of the present truths. There's one important thing about it, and you find it in Isaiah 58, 13 and 14, but I want us to look at verse 14. Ah, let us read Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. I'll read here. Isaiah 58, 13 and 14. When you're there, let me hear you say amen. Not there yet? Amen. Are we all there? You want amen? Are we all there? Amen. Amen. Let's go. One, two. If you what? Turn, turn away your away foot away, away, your foot from the from Sabbath, the Sabbath, from doing your own work. On my, on my holy day, and call the Sabbath what? The, the holy day the of the Lord, Lord honorable, Lord. and shall honor yes. him, yes. not doing your own yes. one, yes. not finding your own one, yes. not speaking your own one. Yes. This is the other part that in verse 14 that I want you to pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Then you shall what? Delight. Delight. Yes. Yourself yes. in the Lord. Lord. We can pause there. Mm -hmm. Yes. I pointed out to somebody some time ago, the Sunday worshippers, they delight true Christians. Mm 
other Christians. They didn't like themselves in the world. Yes, they do. But God said, God is saying here that not until you keep my Sabbath, then you can experience what is true delight. Right. You cannot fully delight yourself in the Lord and enjoy God as you should without keeping God's Sabbath. Amen. 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 Why? Why is that so important? You know, as I pointed out in our recent discussion, that in this last days, there is a push. A matter of fact, we know the Roman Catholic Church says that they have the authority to change God's holy day from Saturday to Sunday. But we should remember that Sunday observance Sunday observer, we worship every day. What do you say? We worship on Sunday, we worship on Monday, we worship when every day. But observing Sunday as the holy day is that God's mark. What is God's mark? Do you know what is God's mark? Yes, yes. Well, the Bible says in, in um Exodus, ex, was it Exodus? Um Exodus 31, 12 to 17, that I give you my Sabbath as a what? As a what? As a sign that I am what? Sanctified you. So when we are truly keeping God's Sabbath, we chose that we are saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, water baptized, Jesus on your mind. Amen. You have a new life. What do you say? Amen. And so, what is the sign? That sign. Do you know the sign? It's in Exodus, what? 20 verse what? Okay. Right? 20 verse 8. Let's look, examine the sign. Right, Exodus, let's go up to the command. Let's examine the sign. And that sign, I should tell you, is called the what? Start with S. Anybody knows? C. Thank you. That sign is called the seal of God in Revelation 7 verse 1. Jesus says to the angels, hold back the what? The winds of strife until what? Until my servants are what? Sealed. So right now, my brothers and my sisters, God is sealing his people one by one. What is this seal? Do you know what a seal is? Do you know the three parts of a seal? Anybody knows the three parts of a seal? Okay, have anyone ever seen a seal before? When you go to some authority, and they write a letter to certify it, then they get that thing and, and press it on it. Well, if you observe that seal, it has three main parts. Anybody know what one part is? What is the first one part? Tell me. Main title. Main title and what? The other day. Uh, well, um, the domain. Domain, yeah. Domain. Yes. Main title. Domain. The name, uh -huh. the title, and who the person's what? Domain. We are the person who right. didn't right. know the Sabbath as God's seal. And the Sabbath is the seal of God. Let's look at it. Verse 8. Let's read it together. It says what? Remember the what? Sabbath day. To keep it what? Holy. Six days. You shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the what? Sabbath of the Lord thy God. What is the first seal there? What is the name? The Lord. What is the name? The Lord thy God. God. Yes. That is his title. Yes. That is his name. Let's go on to the name. 
In it you shall not do any work. You nor your son nor your daughter nor your man, a maid servant nor your cattle nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made what? Heaven and the earth. What is the next seal? What is the next seal? Tell me. The next part of the seal here. Yeah, where does he rule? All of heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. That's God's domain. Mm -hmm. That is the next part of the seal. And let's continue reading. The sea and all that um, is in them. Mm -hmm. So heaven and earth is sea and everything that is in them. God rules them. And rested on the what? Seventh day, therefore the Lord blessed the what? So the three parts of the seal has a title, has a domain, and what is the other part again? The name, title, and domain. domain. So um, what what is the name? God. The Lord thy God. He and um, the Lord. And what is his title? Is God. Is who? God. Yeah. And he rules. His kingdom is what? Heaven and earth, the seas and all that in them. Everything. That is God's seal. And when we believe it, when we believe it, we act differently. When we believe it, we are blessed differently. Yes. When we believe it, things happen to us differently. Things happen to us um, um, in a better way, what do you say? Though the heaven, though the host of darkness may be against us, but when we believe that God see, that the present truth, then we have a message to share what they say. We have a message to share. And so, my brothers, in this last days, brothers and sisters, in this last days, God said, we are reminded that there, I'm wrapping up now, we are reminded that there is God's seal. And there that, that Satan has a seal too. And what is that seal called? The seal that Satan gives is called the mark of the what? The mark of the beast. Identified by what? Six, six, six. Mm -hmm. What is um, the mark of the beast? Anybody knows? That is, no, the 666 is to identify who the beast is. Right. But what is his mark? Uh -huh. Sunday worship. So God's mark is easy to remember. Satan always do what? Counterfeit what God has done. So God has his mark, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And Satan counterfeit it with what? Sunday. Mm -hmm. So Sunday observance is a direct rebellion against your maker. And that's present truth. That's present truth as I pointed out to um, our, um, some writers that every single week God has given us a holiday, what they say. Amen. Every single week. And we should rest on that day. Amen? Amen. We should rest on that day. And that day that God has given it us as a holiday, I pointed out that there is a special blessing for that day. That is the only day that has holiness applied to it. That is the only day that is sanctified. And so on Sabbath, while we um, go along with our business, we must remember we are in holy hours. We must remember that holy hours begin from when? From sunset to what? To sunset. So, what is our testimony? What do we share? 
we share our conviction, what they say. We share our belief. We share what God has placed in our heart. When we trust God, when we surrender to him every morning, as number says, his grace, his, his mercies are renewed when? Every morning. Every morning, God give us new mercies. When we have something to jump and to shout about and to praise God about, then we can witness what do you say? Then we can witness. And as I pointed out, that notice in the scripture reading here, in the scripture reading here, Jesus was exclaiming that the harvest is right. But why did Jesus didn't say, okay, go ye therefore? Because he knows that some didn't believe. Maybe they were not ready. Maybe they didn't have a testimony to share. What is your testimony? What is your testimony? Yes, you have a testimony that your sins, though it was higher than a mountain, but God sanctify you. What do you say? Amen. You have a testimony that right now your sins have been cleansed. And when you and when you go to God, you just when you go to God, you go and you accept his pardon. No more guilt. No more shame. No more pain. Mm -hmm. Because God is your shield that you're covering. What do you say? Mm -hmm. 